I finally did it. Somebody gave me a couple gift cards to Amazon. I think it was a total of 150 bucks and I did it. It didn't take long. Um, I did, you know, procrastinate a little bit. I kind of did what I guess most of us would do when you're about to spend this kind of money. You go back and you do your research again and you just, you, you want to make sure that you're making the right decision. And so I spent quite a bit of time kind of mulling this over, doing some research, and I'm happy to say that I came up with the same conclusion. So I spent my $150 in Amazon gift cards, and I know what you guys feel about Amazon. I kind of, I feel the same way about Amazon. Um, we're trying to get away from them the best we can, but you know, when somebody gives you a gift card, you gotta use it, right? I did it. I got the Grand First Brooks Wildlife Hatchet. I had been looking for a good hatchet for a long time to go with my axe collection. Um, as you guys know from watching my videos, I've had a Coleman Camp Axe for a long time, and there's nothing wrong with that axe except for the fact that it's just not a great axe if you're trying to carve or, or do anything particular with it. But if you're just going in to whack something apart, like doing fence repairs, there is absolutely nothing wrong with my Coleman hatchet. Um, my son bought it for me for Christmas. Oh gosh, I don't know how many years ago that was. But um, if you want good hand tools, and I think it, we're, we're getting into a stage here in society where you're gonna need and you're gonna wanna have good hand tools on hand, um, that is not a proper hatchet, just like your store-bought ax is not a proper ax. And I'm gonna show you guys over the next few weeks something else that I got at a store with a gift card um, that is store-bought and why I don't like some of that junk. But anyway, the, the Grand First Brooks Wildlife Hatchet um, comes up on reviews left and right as the top hatchet. And I had not had a chance to try this out yet. I have been feeling a little under the weather, so I haven't really been outside. But I can definitely do a video like so many other people that do videos on YouTube showing you something that I haven't used before and call it an unboxing video, even though it came in a bag and we should be good with it, right? But I, I mean, I do, I, I love tools. I love watching videos about tools and, and, and knowing why people bought a particular tool. So let me explain to you why I like these tools so much. Um, and it has nothing to do with Grand First Brooks. In fact, I'm gonna talk about the company in, in a few minutes, but, um, my wife bought me, ooh, there's some fluff on there, this uh, Grand First Brooks splitting ball after I broke mine uh, back in 20, uh, maybe it was 2019 for Christmas, and I fell in love with this thing. I have, I, the quality of this splitting ball is absolutely superb to anything I've ever picked up. It splits wood superbly. It's a Scandinavian design splitting mall. So unlike your American splitting mall, it's actually a little shorter. And I love that. I love the control I have with this. Um, I loved it so much that I went out and I got a Scandinavian forest ax. Now I do have some Swedish blood. I'm, I'm mainly Scottish, Irish, Swedish, and, and Norwegian if you look at my, my stats when you send your blood into one of those places. So um, my great grandmother came straight over from Sweden. And so I, I do have a lot of respect for Scandinavian tools, and I think that they make some of the best axes, knives, and cutlery um, on earth, despite what people think about, you know, German cutlery and stuff. I think Sweden has it down. I went out and I bought this axe, and I absolutely love this axe. This thing, you could fell a tree with it. You could do so many things with this. But when you're backpacking, you're trying to keep it light, it is just a little bit too big. I mean, it's, it's an ax you can get two hands on, but it's not, it's not very big. So that's when I went in search of the best hatchet. And I didn't have to have a Grand First Brooks hatchet. Grand First Brooks, the name gets people, and it was designed that way from the very beginning in 1902. You see, Grand First Brooks, the, the last part of that, Brooks, means works, which back in the uh, early to mid 1800s in a place like Sweden, Brooks, the, the name was associated with large industrial companies that had royal privileges. And so there's a lot of heritage 
that goes with a, a company name that has the Brooks after it. But the Grand First Brooks um, Forge, I don't, I don't think that there was a forge back in the 1850s. I know that these, the, the guy who bought it and started Grand First Brooks bought it in 1871. He didn't name the company until 1902. Um, and so a lot of those Brooks companies and, and the whole royal privileges thing, that all died in the 1850s. By the end of the 1850s, there was none of that. Um, but he knew, because Grand First is, is a town in northern Sweden, he knew if he, if he put you know, the, the name Brooks after the town name, that people would associate it with that type of heritage. And he was selling a bunch of axes and tools and cysts to people in southern Sweden. It didn't matter. You know, he, you know you've you think you're buying the sigh from a company that's, you know, been around for a hundred years. And in reality, the company had only been around since 1902. Um, and then, you know, if you follow the story of the company from there, um, it, it did do really well for quite some time until the 1960s, of course, when uh, chainsaws started taking out, you know, the, the need for having an axe or a hatchet, and I would argue we're, we're about to head back to a time when you're going to need a, an axe or a hatchet instead of a chainsaw that requires electricity or gas. But um, a lot of that kind of went to the, to the wayside, and um, the company was ultimately sold. Uh, the company that bought it filed bankruptcy a few years later, and then finally somebody who had been working with uh, the company in years past who had another company bought Grand First Brooks again. And that's where you get into the modern day Grand First Brooks. The modern day Grand First Brooks is only about 25 years old. And in reality, these style axes that we love so much have only really been around since about 2010. That's when they really picked up um, the, the modern designs of these axes that they call their classic design. And so it's an interesting story, but the heritage that you're looking for, what you think you're buying, really isn't there. It's been a marketing gimmick since the 1900s. Um, and I think that that takes the romance out of the story a little bit for a company, but I don't think it changes the quality of the product that you're buying from the company. Because if there's one thing that this company cares about, it's quality. And that's why this hatchet comes up on the top of the list for so many outdoorsmen. All right, so let's get into the Grand First Brooks Wildlife Hatchet. Straight out of the box, this thing is razor sharp. You can shave the hair right off your arm with this thing without even having to sharpen it. And it's probably this, one of the nice things about all Grand First Brooks axes to me is that they all have come sharp enough to take the hair right off my arm. The head of the axe comes down real deep over the handle. And that is a really nice touch because it gives you a lot more metal on the handle. The weight of this and the balance is beautiful. I love that. I mean, you're not gonna get tired swinging this thing around. Um, and it's I'm, it's pretty lightweight. You won't get tired swinging around some of their larger axes just because of the balance of them. They're, they're absolutely beautiful axes. But um, that extra metal on there is really gonna help secure your head to the handle. Yeah, I've seen a lot of cool looking axes and hatchets where the, you know it's cut up a little higher. And I just don't think that that's very practical in the long run. Um, something that Grand First Brooks stopped doing a while back is on the heads of the hand of the, the axes, they used to always have one of these metal, um, I forget what you call those things, but it, it, you know what I'm talking about. And they stopped putting those in there. And so, it, and I haven't had a problem with a head coming loose on any of the ones that I have. So I'm not too worried about it. I think that when you get to axes this size where the heads are, are much lighter in weight, you really don't have to have that if the heads are set correctly in the first place. So one thing that I've noticed with this wildlife hatches is that if you look at the toe and you look down at the heel, um, it actually looks like it's been cut slightly off. And I think that that was to handle a concern when people put their ax sheath on, um, the axes were kind of cutting through the top of the sheath. And these are very nice sheaths. And when you look at this, even with, you know, that kind of, blunt cut, slight cut at each end of the, the, the blade there, or the bit. Um, the bit is still kind of digging in a little bit into this sheath. And I'm not sure, you know, if there's anything you can really do to solve that with this style sheath. And 
like I said, Grand First Brooks makes some very nice sheaths. For paying a couple hundred bucks, you expect to have a nice leather sheath with your, your ax. If you look at my uh, Scandinavian forest ax, on this ax, I actually have a different leather case by Review Outdoor Gear. This is a very nice, high quality case. It's stitched. Um, the thing I don't like about these rivets is I've actually had an ax, and this one in particular, uh, go through the leather and hit those rivets and then damage the blade. So I like the fact that they stitch these. They do have a couple of rivets on the leather, leather on the corners, um, which is good. That's gonna help hold it together, but it's very nicely stitched. Look at the thickness of this case compared to this one here. And I mean, it's just, it's a solid it's and beautiful case. Um, the way that these are designed, they stay on extraordinarily well. They don't come off that easily. Um, so even if you are out working a lot and you, and you leave your, um, your strap off, it's probably, it's gonna stay on there pretty well. So they've designed these for kind of a perfect fit for whichever ax you own, whether it be a Helco Work, a Holtz Brook, Grand First Brooks, um, but truly good craftsmanship. I love it so much, I actually got uh, a handle guard from them as well. And I love this setup. I'm actually going to be doing something similar to my wildlife hatchet once I get everything oiled up and I um, get some more Amazon gift cards because it's not cheap. The extras of these are not cheap. Take some money to get anywhere with it. Um, now the pole or the butt of the ax um, does look like it's got some, some metal to it. I don't like to use the pole of the ax for knocking in wedges or or anything if I don't have to. I have a splitting maul that has a proper sledge on the back for doing that. You, what could happen is you could actually warp the head, which could loosen the handle, then you've got all sorts of problems. But I think if you're out camping and you're just popping a few stakes into the ground, this head is, this pole is gonna work just fine for you. It's a, it's a decent amount of metal back there. I don't think you're gonna wreck it hitting some, some tech. 10 stakes into the ground. Anyway, it is a beautiful ax. You can grip up high and ha have great control. I mean, you can feel it. Just, you know, if you are gonna do some carving, there's a nice grip spot there. Uh, gripping it down low, I feel like it, the balance is perfect if you're gonna be doing some chopping. And we'll take this out the next couple of weeks and we'll, we'll, put it, we'll put it to a test. Um, I can tell you that, that the Coleman hatch that I have does not have this balance. I guarantee you when I go to take some swings, my aim is gonna be much better with this and therefore I'm gonna be a lot more productive. My wrist isn't gonna get tired as fast. That's why you buy good tools because if all of this stuff goes away and you're gonna to have to rely on your hands, you need to have the proper equipment. Um, but I love the grips that you get on this hatchet and it's just an exciting thing. I'm, I'm really excited to have um, all these axes and hatchets that I've been building up. And I do have a Helco Works Universal Axe, which is, that thing will take chunks out of trees when they're down on the ground. Um, but I would like to get a nice felling axe, and it doesn't have to be Grand First Brooks uh, or Helco Work. I, I'd like to get a really solid uh, felling axe at some point. I'd love to have a double bit axe too. Um, but if so, if you guys know of any good brands, list them down below. I'd love to, you know, try them out because I need a I need a felling axe. I I don't want to. I want to end up having all the tools that I need to have. So if something happens, boom, everything's right there. And to be honest with you, I prefer after having the right tools, not the cheap stuff from the store, but having the right tools. I actually prefer to grab these and go take care of a project than go through the rigmarole of setting up a chainsaw and all that jazz. So um, once you get used to using your hands again, which I know is hard for a lot of us, um, it, it's actually, a, it's quite a blessing. It, and it just makes you feel more connected with your work. You, you take more pride in what you're doing. Um, but like I said, it takes the right tools. And although Grandfers Brooks is not the romance story that you once thought it was. These all are handcrafted. I mean, they have been since the beginning times of the company. And, and because of that, you'll actually see some imperfections. If you look at the blade, 
you'll see a lot of these come with some curvatures. Uh, and I don't think, you know, with Amazon, you don't have a hard time returning things and getting new ones in. But um, with depending on where you buy it from, they may tell you to take a hike because <laughs> it's handmade. Deal with the imperfections. But beautiful tool. Super excited about it. Glad I got to share it with you guys. And I hope you have a good week.